So charge equals the capacitance times the voltage. So if you have a high voltage, you can have more charge stored. If you have a higher capacitance, in other words, bigger plates, you're going to have more charge stored. With a DC voltage in a simple DC capacitor circuit, once the capacitor is charged up, nothing much else happens. You know, no more charges will flow. As a thought experiment, here's a circuit. Now, in this circuit, we've got a, a double throw switch here. And the, the purpose of that is simply just to uh, swap the battery over. Well, just to give you an example, if I switch this over now, then charges are going to flow out of the battery in this direction, and they're going to go up onto this plate. Now when I flick the switch, in this thought experiment if you like, I flick the switch, we've now got these charges going in the other direction. So now they're going into the capacitor above and they're leaving the capacitor below. The only time the charges move is when we operate that switch. When the switch is not operated, then no charges are flowing. If we flick this on and off, say 30 times a second, then we're going to have more charge flowing than if we flick this on for only, say, five times a second. So you can see that this equation then derived from Q equals CV. If we think about changing the voltage over time, if this amount of voltage over time is changing a lot, like I say, if it's 30 times a second as opposed to five, then the charges that are moving back and forth, that's going to happen more often. In other words, the current is going to be larger. The relationship between current and the change in voltage is what's important in a capacitor circuit and why that is important when we come to proving the phase difference between current and voltage the amount of charge that moves in a unit of time is, is the other word the other description for that is, is just current let's now assume a periodic voltage we will use here a pendulum as a direct analogy to an ideal capacitor circuit where the gravitational potential energy is equivalent to voltage and the kinetic energy is equivalent to current and this makes it easier to understand what happens in a circuit with an AC voltage and a capacitor. We define the pendulum's maximum value over here this is the maximum height on this plus side of this axis of the x-axis and the maximum value on the minus side is over here we let our pendulum go at its plus side maximum value so we're going to hold it and now we're going to let it go if there's no uh, resistance in wind or friction then in theory this pendulum should swing forever but and it's always going to reach that point it's never going to get higher than that it's going to swing around reach that point swing back and do that forever if there's no friction and no wind resistance or anything in reality of course it slows down although we're going to describe this in terms of gravitational potential energy versus kinetic energy of this ball at the end of the pendulum we actually can relate both of those ideas to voltage and current charge flow also at this point if we let go just at the moment we let go there's no motion so the kinetic energy, which is uh, the energy of motion, is zero at this point. Now remember, I'm relating uh, potential energy to voltage and kinetic energy to current. So we can also say, if we talk, talk about in terms of voltage and current, that here we're at the maximum voltage and it's about to start dropping off. And at this point, there is no voltage change, therefore the current and I'm using arrows here to represent the size of the current here. So at this point, just like we said with the kinetic energy, here also current is zero. As the pendulum lets go, it's going to start reducing its potential energy. And you can see as it reduces its potential energy, the kinetic energy of the pendulum increases. Now as we get to the point where there's the minimum potential energy, uh, which we would say the minimum voltage, you can see at this point there's the maximum kinetic energy. When the voltage is zero, then the current is at its maximum value. Whilst we're swinging through the zero position, we're now moving through this zero side, and the current is still in the same direction, but it's getting less and less, until eventually we reach the minus side here, the top of the minus side, where the voltage again is at its maximum value, but this time it's at its maximum minus value, and you can see at this point where it stops, 
there's zero current again. So that's what the pendulum represents. So you can visualize voltage and current by looking at this pendulum. And also we can plot this motion out. It's going back and forth. It's equivalent of this sine curve. This exactly explains how this pendulum motion is. Now at the top of this maximum gravitational potential energy curve or voltage if we want to think of it as voltage we're at a maximum here and that's where we let go of the ball and you can see as we let go of the the pendulum it started to reduce in its potential energy started to reduce and then as it swung through very fast through its minimum potential energy here it then goes negative so you can see it's gone negative on the other side and if we then look go down here so I've drawn a a dashed line down to this bottom curve. Now this bottom curve represents the kinetic energy and you can see the kinetic energy at the start when we let go of the pendulum or when the voltage is at its maximum positive value here you can see that again the kinetic energy is zero the current is zero so we go down the dashed line and there you can see that the current is zero. So what's happened with the current here it's slowed down, it's slowed down, it's slowed down and then it's stopped and now it's moving in the opposite direction. As you can see here the arrow, it, it, when it's swinging back and forth, it swings up, it stops, then it starts coming back the other way. And the current is, of course, a very low value here. And that's what it is at here. If we consider that where the charges, when they're moving from left to right, is positive, and when they're moving from right to left is negative, we can see here at the minimum potential energy at this point here because the charges now are moving in their maximum speed from right to left in other words in the minus direction they're going this way as we swing through the the zero of potential energy we're actually at the minus maximum of the kinetic energy or current in this case and that's indicated by this long arrow and then if we we continue we can see here that now with these smaller arrows the current is getting uh, is still moving in the same direction in other words it's still moving from uh, right to left in the minus direction but it's getting lesser and lesser until it reaches this point here now at this point here we are actually at this point here and we're at the actual the minus maximum value of potential energy or the voltage in this case so you can see that they, everything matches quite nicely the only reason we're calling this negative or positive is just so that we have some sort of direction between the two opposite sides of the voltage that can be a bit confusing actually when you look at the minus and plus signs you're not quite sure why they're given those values but it's just a choice because we've got to differentiate from that position and that position if we said for example that that's a maximum voltage and that's a maximum voltage which one are you talking about are you talking about the pendulum when it's on this side are you talking about the pendulum when it's on this side so by defining a plus and a minus and having the zero as the crossing point then you can determine exactly where the pendulum is and that's the reason we use pluses and minus signs so that's the description of what's happening there in a AC circuit with a capacitor and the interesting thing, the point of all this really, is to show the phase difference. Now, if you look at these two curves, and if you consider a circular motion is 360 degrees. So when you spin round, I've drawn two circles here. If you spin round and you start from this maximum value and you go all the way round, that's 360 degrees. Now, you'll note that the maximum on the kinetic energy or the current here is 90 degrees ahead of where it is here so it gets to the the maximum before the uh, if, if we look at this as the beginning then that's got there before that one and how many angles is that well we can see here that when we go around the circle 180 degrees is going to be this point because then it crosses then of course it's crossing over to the minus side so that's uh, 180 then we're on the minus side so that's another 180 so half of 180 is 90 so you can see that if we shift this over by 90 degrees, then they will match, they will be in phase. We can even show it here. So on the circle, the y-axis represents the maximum voltage or potential energy. So you can see as we move the radius round the 
we drop down from the the circumference where the radius meets the circumference, drop a vertical line down. That gives us our maximum value. As we move this angle round, we can see that it's going to be smaller and smaller until we reach zero. So down here we're at zero. We started here and now we're at zero. And if we continue, we can see we're now on the minus side. So this is the minus side of the circle. And again, we're going through until we reach the maximum minus value, which is down here. So that's 180 degrees. So from there to there, from one maximum to the next maximum, 180 degrees. Now what's happening at the same time with the current? Well, again, we're just showing the 90 degrees phase shift here. With the current, uh, when we're at the maximum potential energy, the current is just going from plus to minus and it's at its minimum value, it's at its lowest value and that happens at the zero point where it's going from plus to minus. So on this circle at the zero point where it's going from plus to minus is this axis here. So now we're moving down and you can see that this angle is going to get larger and larger until it reaches the minus maximum value which is here and then it's going to continue and, and reach this point over here where it's zero again. So by just looking at these two circles you can see that the angle difference between them is a 90 degree shift. So that's what the 90 degrees phase shift is between current and voltage in a very simple AC circuit. So just to summarize, the phase shift in an ideal capacitor with an AC source is going to be dependent on the resistance. Now, in an ideal capacitor, what we're actually saying is there is no resistance. So when there's no resistance, the phase difference between the voltage measured across the circuit and the current going through the circuit is going to be 90 degrees, a phase angle of 90 degrees. And if we then go to the other extreme and then accept that in real capacitors there is resistance, then uh, with a very large resistor value, we'll find that the actual phase shift between the current and the voltage across the circuit is the same. They'll sit on top of each other. And we'll be able to show that with the oscilloscope. So how will we do that? Well, we'll set the experiment up like this. It's really simple. We'll run an AC source. Now, the AC source I'm going to use is an oscillator, which is oscillating at 1.5 kilohertz. That's this symbol here. Uh, that's our oscillator. We're going to have a capacitor and a resistor in series, and that's the whole circuit. Just one capacitor, one resistor, and the oscillator voltage across them. The capacitor value I'm going to use is 0 0.1 microfarads. The resistor is going to be a variable resistor box so that we can change the resistors and see what happens when we have a very small resistor and see what happens when we increase the resistance. We should see that phase relationship. Well, we will see that phase relationship going from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And we'll see that on the oscilloscope by plotting both the curves together and we'll be able to shift the current curve Every time we change the resistance, we'll see that current curve shifting across until eventually they lay on top of each other. So we'll have a capacitor, a resistor. One of the scope probes will be dropped across the resistor, so we're measuring the voltage across the resistor. But remember that when we're talking about a resistor, unlike a capacitor, the voltage and current are in phase. So by us measuring the small voltage drop across the resistor, when we're using a very small resistor, for example, we're actually got a proxy for current so we're gonna the scope probe one is going to be thought of as the as the representation of current because that it is basically that it's just proportional so this small voltage drop when we're using very small resistors the amplitude of that curve is going to be a lot smaller than the voltage curve. we'll see that on the scope and then of course the second scope probe will be dropped across the whole circuit so then we'll see the actual voltage across the whole circuit and it's the looking at these two curves on the scope we will see this phase relationship enough talk let's prove this in this simple experiment and see what we get I've used a 10 ohm resistor there just to give it something uh, so that there's always some kind of resistance when using the resistor box. So that's 10 ohms, and then I'm using this resistor box, which can go from 0 ohms up to uh, 10 megs.
we won't ever get even close to 10 megs but it means that now I can change the resistance with these uh, buttons so that I can move I can slowly increase the resistance and reduce the resistance so that you can see the effects on the curves on the scope so we're going to use the scope I've got a scope connected up so uh, there's the scope there so we're going to be using that scope and for the uh, oscillator uh, I'm just using this little oscillator that I built uh, I'll probably do another video about how uh, that oscillator works and and how you can make one of your own oscillators that's a point at the oscilloscope because that's going to be the the relevant uh, thing here okay there they are so what we've got is the two curves the the smaller curve this one here is the the voltage that's being measured across the resistor now of course the resistor is much uh, is is a very small one in this case and that is why that curve I've actually got the settings the actual amplitude settings way back on that one uh, and this one is the actual voltage shown across the whole circuit and that one will start I'll leave that one stationary and that's uh, fixed up on the middle there so the so the one that's interesting here is this representation of the current now you can see if I'm if we're looking at the center position here if I move if I move that down this one down now to the center position you can see just as in that diagram that this is crossing the zero axis at the maximum voltage you can see that the current here is leading the voltage by almost 90 degrees so now what I'll do is I'll just increase the resistance and we'll see what happens you can see already that it's just shifted and also it's got bigger because we're increasing the resistance that curve's going to get bigger so I'm going to just cut that down a little bit so it doesn't completely go over the screen and we'll continue increasing the resistance so we're now on uh, um, 190 roughly and now we're on 290 ohms and we'll just keep going up and see what happens there's 390 ohms that's 490 ohms that's 500 and you can see the gap now between them is 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 reducing I'm gonna just cut that down again so it doesn't fill the screen so we'll just keep going so that's 590 690 790 890 that's 900 and then we'll go on the other one that's 910 oh that's 1000 800 now so I've gone up at a, a big jump there and that's 2000 and you can see at this point they're sitting on top all right the amplitudes are different but if I move that up okay it's not quite sitting on that go up a bit further so we're on two we're on 2.9k at the moment so let's go up another 3.9k and now you can see that look they're on top of each other so now there's no phase difference they're completely in phase and that's because well they're virtually completely in phase that's because we're using a large resistor now with large resistance values so that's it really that's that's how this works now you might say why is this useful well it is useful in the sense that you can now select a phase angle anywhere between 0 and 90 by an appropriate selection of your resistor now why is that useful? Well, in certain situations, for example, if you're building an oscillator, you might want to take the output signal back to the input, change it by 180 degrees. So if you have two of these filters, these RC filters in a row, then you can actually swap the signal round so that it's 180 degrees out of phase, and that's the condition you want for a oscillator to work. So you can do you can do lots of other useful things, being able to shift the phase angle between voltages so in other words when you take the voltage off the, that small resistor you could amplify that and then you've got like a voltage which is out of phase by a particular angle that you want it to be so it's quite a powerful technique so that's it that's what phase angle is all about so i hope this has been useful